Hi, this is GP here from Career Launcher and uh, today we'll look at uh, the QA section for CAT. And one of the things which I want to highlight and which in fact I always say is, yeah, jugaad lagao. I uh, don't rely too much on mathematics. Maths is important, it is essential, I'm not saying it is not required. By end of the day, this is not what is going to get you through CAT. What is required is this particular thing called jugaad. Okay. Now, let me try to explain why. Okay. First thing to remember. CAT is not like your board exams. In the board exams, out of syllabus is an exception. This is an exceptional thing. This does not happen normally. However, when it comes to papers like CAT, what syllabus? The right question to ask actually is what syllabus are we talking about? There's hardly anything called syllabus. At least the exams don't tell you what the syllabus is. So what is required is we look at old papers and find out ki syllabus kya hai. So pehli cheez to ye hai ki syllabus kya koi in these papers, which is not the case as far as board exams are concerned. Second thing, steps are very, very important as far as these school exams are concerned. You get marks for steps also. While here only the answer matters. It does not matter how you got the answer, whether you know the right answer or not. As long as you have marked the correct answer, it is assumed you know it. So that's the second thing. Third thing is, the expectation is you will be able to showcase your knowledge. It is the knowledge which is going to be important. It is your knowledge which is being tested out here. While here you have to choose the best among the options given. You will have situations where you will find none of, the, uh, none of the answer choices exactly correct. You have to pick the best among the options. And your, that is your ability to pick the answer which is important. Because remember, things are from, not from syllabus. Not only that, you don't have sufficient time to complete the paper. Which is important thing to remember because in, in your exams etc. Typically, you will have sufficient time to uh, complete the paper in the boards, but not in CAT and these exams. Okay? And the design is, the working is important. As far as board exams are concerned, working is important. And here, most of the questions have choices. And you have choices. You don't need to show your working. You, as I said earlier, you just need to mark the correct answer in these particular papers. And uh, as I said, here you need to know maths. Optional optional so those of you who are busy mugging up your formulas theorems and lots of calculation you're wasting your time okay and i'll show it to you why you're wasting your time in the next few minutes okay and and i'm sure many of you will have this question yes i'm bold to the but kaam kaita ki nahi kaita let's let, let me give you a start this is my these are this is what i scored in class 12th maths 48 percent marks okay what does that mean obviously i don't know maths math se mera koi dool dool asa ka lena dena nahi hai but I cleared CAT, I did my MBA from my MB. Obviously, I would have cleared the section called the QA and also would have done well in DILR, both of which as per popular conception, popular perception requires mathematics. Okay. Last 25 years, my, large number of my students have used these methods and gone into the top institutes and you could check up with your seniors also. Okay. So, so let's look at what do we mean by Jugaad. Unfortunately, for most of the people, when we look at solving question this is what you are looking for there are multiple ways of solving questions the strategy can be multiple depending on the question depending on the information given unfortunately hum log khali formula pe phas jate hain don't worry about formula formula is one of the ways of doing it in addition to that you have multiple ways we can do approximation we can work backwards using the choices we can identify pattern ha ah, guess bhi kar sakte hain and uh, manipulation of data is definitely a norm and we can eliminate options and visualize the information so there are multiple ways of doing it the point is are you willing to do it or not and what is the first thing out there the first thing for jugar is to remember there are options and if you are willing to look at the options along with the questions you will be able to get the answer reasonably fast in a short span of time and it will be the correct answer okay now this is the second part which you should be clear about if you're looking at cat 2021 Look at the score required for 99.5 percentile. I'm not even looking at 99 percentile. 14 marks, 13 questions. How many questions were there? 22 questions. Out of 22, if you did 13 to 14 questions correctly, you would have got the score of 99.5 percentile. And, and what does that mean? It means you don't need to do with all the 22 questions. Panda kailo bhot hai. Which gives you about two and a half. Maybe three minutes, uh, 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 about three minutes to a question. Less than three minutes, actually. So if you have three minutes approximately per question, 
why, why do you need to worry about every other question which is there? And if there are a couple of questions which are high funda mathematics, maybe you can afford to leave them also because there are ample number of easy questions available and that is what you need to be focusing on. Okay. Okay. So let's try to understand ye kaise kiya jata hai. Okay. Principles dekhte hain. Aur har principle ke saath hum ek ek sawaal leke chalenge. Okay. First question. Now, if you know mathematics, I'm sure you will make equations. But let's read the question. If A, B into C, D is 1073 and B into C, D is 2117, find the value of A, B plus C, D given that A, B, B, A, C, D are all two-date positive integers. Just go math sati ho lag jayenge. Wo kya karenge? They will say this is 10 A plus B. And they will create into 10 C plus G is equal to 1073. Where they go? Similarly, you will create an equation out of this which says 10b plus a into 10c plus g is equal to 2117. Though equation, char variable, time bar baat karenge, leave the question, move on. Isn't it? Some will be slightly more smarter and they will try to factorize 2117 and 1073. Don't know get factors dekhenge. And the common factor is going to be obviously CD. The common factor is going to be CD. You can get it. But 2 double 1 7 and 1 0 7 3 are definitely not convenient numbers. So, yeah, factorization may be time to lagega. Kya karna chahiye hai? Please look at these two numbers. They are odd numbers. Okay. Okay. If 1 0 7 3 is odd, what can you say about A, B and C, D? Can I not say this has to be also odd and this also should be odd? Why? If the product is odd, hai, then the numbers have to be odd. Even if one of them was even, the product would have been even. So first I have been able to looking at the question self established that both AB as well as CD are odd. And what is the sum of two odd numbers? If you add two odd numbers, you will only get an even number. What does that mean? My answer has to be even. If my answer has to be even, choice 4 is wrong, choice 3 is wrong, choice 2 is wrong, this is the answer. What maths did you need for this? Or even the third class, second class, fourth class, I don't remember when. But that is what you had studied. Okay. So, so when you're looking at question, please look at the choices. Choices give you lots of information. If you are not going to look at that particular information, obviously you will struggle in the paper. Okay. So, so that's the first thing. Look at the question, read the choices, get information from there. You could have also done the question faster by looking at the unit digit. Let me take a second thing because I am sure Koina ko Utke Bolega. But if there were two questions, two choices which had even number, uh, which had even number, okay, then what? Okay, koi baat nahi, dekh lete hai. If A, B into C, D is 1073, what can you say about B and D? It can be 1 into 3 or 3 into 1. Or only then you will get the product ending with 3. What else is possible? 7 into 9 and 9 into 7. Again, 9, 7 is 63. Unit date will be 3 in both the cases. So what will be the unit digit of the sum? Then the unit digit of the sum in this particular case is going to be 3 plus 1, 4. And unit date out here is going to be 6. Your answer can be either 64, 66, 66 becomes the correct answer. So I hope this establishes one basic principle for you that choices are important. Agla sawal. Maximum value of this expression where x lies between minus 1 and 4. Very good. What will most people do? Start differentiating. Some will convert this into a perfect square plus something or minus something and we will run away from the model. What should we do? X ki value diya na? Substitute karo. What, is, what value of X should you substitute? Start with the most convenient value. Which is the most convenient value? X equal to 0. So if I say X is equal to 0, what is the value of this expression going to be? 0 plus 0, 30. 30. Agar x equal to 0 pe 30 hai, can I say the maximum value has to be either greater than or equal to 30? Maximum value 30 se kam to nahi ho sakti na? Your answer has to be definitely either 30 or more than 30, which means choice 4 is wrong. What is 93 by 4? Half of 93 is about 46. Half of 46 is 23. Ye bhi 30 se kam hai, ye bhi galat ho bhi. Two choices we have eliminated by just putting x equal to 0. What next step? Take another value. Okay, let's take x equal to 1. x equal to 1, what do you get? 30 plus 9 minus 3, 36. That means now I will say the maximum value should be 
greater than or equal to 36 this goes away that means 30 cannot be the answer the remaining choice is the answer i did not calculate the answer i eliminated three incorrect options remember i said elimination of options i eliminated three incorrect options and jo bacha usko mark kar diya that is the way you do cat you don't do by solving those stupid equations okay next question inequalities this is an area where most students struggle ek to algebra waisi nahi samajh aata x y z ke chakkar mein then you have these greater than equal to and with this question power b fraction mein dal di koi baat nahi we will do what do we do in the previous question what did we do in the previous question chose values let's do the same thing let's pick up values of x and substitute but x ki kya value dalenge again the same thing take a value of x which is easy to calculate and which is the most comfortable convenient and easiest obviously zero but ye kyun kar rahe hain i am doing that if i say x equal to zero satisfies yani jis bhi choice mein x is not there that choice has to be incorrect and whichever choice has x equal to zero that choice can be correct so let's start if x is equal to zero what is the value of this expression this implies minus 2 less than equal to zero this is obviously correct that means x equal to 0 should be a part of my answer. Just be choice may 0 is missing. Please eliminate that choice. Choice C is wrong. It has 0. Choice 4 is. Oh. Choice 4 is wrong. So 1, 2, 3. 3 choices left. Choice 1, choice 2 and choice 5. Now what do we do? Now look at these 3 choices. Uh, take a number which is available in one out of the three choices. For example, I will not worry about a positive number because this is available in both of them. Okay. Okay. So, so take, let's take x equal to positive, negative, anything. Go by what is convenient. So, what will be a convenient number here? Look at the expression 2 by 3, 1 by 3. What does that mean? Take a value of x which is a perfect cube. Perfect cube kya kya hai isme humare paas? The perfect cubes x are 1 and 8. So these are the values I will want to look at. Okay. So if I take x equal to 1, what do I get? 1 plus 1, 2 minus 2. 0 less than equal to 0 satisfies. That means x equal to 1 should be a part of my answer. Okay. Now which choice do I eliminate? I can't eliminate any choice. Kya yaad rakhna tha? Kya galti ki hai? We picked up a number which is available in all three choices. This was a waste of time and this is what you need to remember. Don't pick a number which is available in all three choice because then you will not be able to eliminate the option. So this was a stupid choice on a part and we should not have done this. So we should look at the number which is available in either one or two choices. Okay. So let's look at x equal to 8. If x equal to 8, what do we get? What will this be? x to bar 1 by 3 will be 2, 2 square 4 plus 2 minus 2 less than equal to 0. What does that mean? 4 is less than equal to 0. This is obviously incorrect. That means x equal to 8 cannot be a part of my answer. Any choice that contains 8 has to be incorrect. Correct answer. Any other number you could have checked? You could have also checked for x equal to minus 8. Why minus 8 is the cube of minus 2? Okay. So I hope between these two questions you get an idea how you have to handle algebra and inequalities especially inequalities. This is the approach that you have to apply. Okay. Next question. This algebra is running. This is what they say. And inequalities in a, 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 let's say, what is it called? Infinite series. But yeah, but again, choices are. What will we do? Add the few terms. So rather than solving the inequality, please add the few terms and get the answer. I'll explain how. Okay. Let us look at the terms. Okay. This is term 1. This is term 2. This is term 3. What is term 1 equal to? Term 1 will be equal to, if I look at this particular expression itself, let me do the working here itself. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, this is T1. So, term 1 is 1 by 8. Okay. But what do we need? We need 36 times s so what is 36 s it will be 36 into term 1 plus 36 into term 2 plus 36 into term 3 plus 36 into term 4 and so on so forth take it take the head term 1 is 1 by 8 so what is 36 into 1 by 8 
कितना हुआ 4.5 सो कैन आई से माय आंसर विल बी ग्रेटर देन 4.5 क्यों अभी तो बाकियों को ऐड ही नहीं किया है इफ आई ऐड दी सब्सिक्वेंट टर्म्स दी वैल्यू विल गो बियोंड 4.5 ओके व्हाट इज टर्म टू 7 बाय ओके ओके सो टर्म टू विल बी 36 इनटू फाइव फोर द 20 20 इनटू 360 इनटू 240 इनटू 7 बाय 240 Right? Or if you want to just save time, don't multiply the entire thing because in the numerator you have a 36, so we can obviously look at cancelling it out. Okay. So plus 36 into 7 upon 3 into 4 into 5 instead of 2 square, I write it as 4. Okay. 4 3 is 12, 12 is 36. What is this? 21 by 20. This is approximately 1, slightly more than 1. So term 1 into 36 is 4.5. Second term is slightly more than 1. Then you have other terms to look at. What is the sum of these two? 5.5. The same logic. My answer should be greater than 5.5. Long choice, fourth answer. Infinite series, pehli teen chai terms add karo, aage chalo. Okay. Okay. Patterns. It is something people don't understand. Maths numbers will always have pattern. And CAT can that they will not give you random question. They will give you question where you will where your task is to essentially identify the pattern and get the answer. And and here pe, if you look at this particular question, number is not fun. Who is going to calculate 30 to power 65, 29 to power 65 or 64? Okay. My hypothesis will be there has to be a pattern which follows. What kind of pattern? So I will look at the smallest power. What is the smallest power? can be 0. Okay. okay, instead of 65, 64, I will say what if it is 30 to power 1 minus 29 to power 1 upon 30 to power 64, uh, 30 to power 64, sorry, okay. 30 to power 64. So that means 0. What have I done? I created a similar thing. In my kya common hai? The power in the numerator, okay. the power in the numerator is one more than the power in the denominator and that's exactly what I have done out here also. Okay. So what will this be? 30 minus 29 is 1 and 30 to power 0 minus 29 to power 0 is 1. So this is going to be 1. Okay. Next, pattern clear, two points are required. So what if I make it the next level, which is 30 square minus 29 square upon 30 plus 29. Oops, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I have done a mistake, someone has said, I will not say it again. Again, so 30 to power 1 minus 29 to power 1 upon 30 to power 0 plus 29 to power 0. 0, okay. 30 minus 29 is 1 and 30 to power 0, 1, 30, 29 to power 0, 1, 2, half. I am sorry, my mistake, okay. So simple thing, there is a mistake, no matter what, let's go ahead and move forward. Next step, instead of 1, 0, now I'll take 2 and 1. 30 square minus 29 square upon 30 to power 1 plus 29 to power 1. Denominator to koi problem niya, 59. Okay. What is the difference between 30 square and 29 square? 59. Okay. n plus 1 whole square minus n square is equal to n plus n plus 1. Yaad at low. The difference between two the squares of two consecutive numbers is the sum of the integers. Okay. So 10 square minus 9 square, 10 plus 9. 20 square minus 19 square, 20 plus 19. Same cheese. This will be 59, which is equal to 1. Now look at this. When the power was 0, okay, when the power was 0 and 1, when the power was 0 and 1, the answer came out to be half. Isn't it? When it becomes when, when the power becomes 2 and 1, it becomes 1. What does that mean? The value when it becomes 65 and 6, 64 will be greater than 1. Hence, I will say my answer R has to be greater than 1. Look at these stupid choices. And this is CAT 2005 question. Okay? And every year in CAT, you'll have such question where your task is to identify the pattern. Mathematically, how do you say it? I don't know, I'm interested. Hu. All I want to do is get the answer, move on to the next question. The cat, I am not trying to showcase my knowledge. All I want to do is, jo aata hai, mark karo, jo nahi aata, aage chalte jau. 
Okay, now let's look at the next question of geometry. If you can draw, you will be able to get the answer and look at this particular question. It has got something very, very interesting. Look at these stupid choices. Okay. What's interesting about the choices? They have numbers and, and, and uh, symbols. What is symbol pi? What is pi 3.14? I can't make head or tail of these choices. So as far as I am concerned, I will always look at converting these choices into numbers that are easy for me to understand. Okay. We'll come back to this, but let's read the question. In the figure given below, quadrant of circle of radius 2 units is drawn. If it touches the line AB at point M, okay, so circle touches the line AB at point M. What is the area of shaded region in square units? Okay. Now, what is the radius of the circle 2? That means this is equal to 2. This is 2. Okay. We need to find the area of this particular region. Okay. First thing, as I said, convert these numbers into these choices into numbers that are easy to understand. What is the value of pi? 3.14, so pi by 2 will be equal to 1.57, even 1.5 will do. Look at this choice 1. What is 1 minus pi by 2? It is 1 minus 1.57, this is a minus 0 0.43. It has got a negative value. How can the area of any figure be negative? Choice 3. 2 minus pi, 2 minus 3.14, this is again negative, it cannot be the answer. You will do this only if you look at the choices. And if you convert these stupid like numbers into numbers that we understand. What is 4 minus pi? It is 4 minus 3.14. How much will that be? 0.86. And this will be 0 0.43. 2 minus 1.57, 0.43, half of 0.86. Okay. Now look at this figure. Two ways of doing this question. Okay. Now when you look at this particular figure, this is 2. If this is 2 and this is 2, this is the diagonal, what will be the side? This is root 2, root 2. So obviously this is going to be root 2 and root 2. What is the area of this square? Look at the area of this square. Area of this square will be root 2 into root 2, which is 2. What can you say about this? Just compare it with the figure, with the, with the value of the area of this square is equal to area of the square is equal to 2. What can you say about this? half, less than half, one fourth of half, approximately what number will you look at? After all, the figure is to scale. Why am I saying figure is to scale? Please use your rough sheet, measure this, measure this, both of them are equal. This is equal to this. The figure is to scale, I don't have to worry about anything. So the straight away thing I will say is, the area of this square is two, this is definitely less than half, in fact, this is something around one fourth. If it is around one fourth, this should be the answer. Another way to look at this question would be to say, okay, what is the area of this particular quadrant? Okay. The radius is 2, isn't it? The radius is 2. So what will be the area of this quadrant? It will be 1 by 4 into pi r square, 1 fourth of the circle into pi into 2 square. It is equal to pi. So what is my answer going to be? The answer will be area of triangle minus triangle a, B, A, O, B. Area of triangle A, O, B minus area of this quadrant, which is 4, divided by 2, isn't it? Not, not 4, this was pi, I'm sorry. Minus pi divided by 2, isn't it? So the answer is going to be area of this minus area of this divided by 2. So which will be area of triangle by 2 minus pi by 2. Which choice has pi by 2? Choice 4. So it is telling me this is the answer. Why will I waste my time on 4 minus pi? Okay. Another interesting question of geometry. Where again people end up wasting lots of time doing calculation. Okay. Square is inscribed inside a circle and the circle inside a regular octagon. Okay. So this is square inside a circle, circle inside a regular octagon. Find the ratio of area of square to octagon. We need to find the ratio of area of square which is inside to the area of octagon. Okay. Before you do anything, please look at the choices. Again, the choices are like the previous question. What did you do in the previous question, question choices? We converted these into numbers that we understand. So let's do the same. How much is root 2? 1.7. So choice 1 is nothing but 1 plus 1.7 which is 2.7 is 2.4. That means square is approximately 80% of this octagon. That is what it is saying. 
choice two, two root two, two point eight minus one, one point eight is to four. Okay, let me write it down neatly. Right, choice three, root two minus one point four, one point four minus one point four. Okay, this is definitely ruled out because obviously we can calculate and cal determine. So effectively, what are the choices? Choice one is telling me area of square to octagon is two point seven is to four. Choice two is telling me it is one point eight is to four. Choice C three is telling me it is zero point four is to four. Please look at this figure. Is it too much to say my answer should be greater than fifty percent? My answer cannot. This is this means square is less than fifty percent. Not possible. Square is ten percent of octagon. Not possible. This is the correct answer. Choice one. The moment you convert this and do an approximation, you know you have got the answer. Okay. So so please be clear. It is visually you can see. After all, this figure has to be correct. Because otherwise they will not be able to make the correct figure. Square, circle, octagon, all of them are correctly made. Visually I can see that the area of square will be definitely more than 50% of the area of octagon. Hence only choice 1 will fit in. Let me say again because some of you will come back again. But the choices could be different. Yes, they could be different. What will I do then? Then instead of octagon I will say circle. Why circle? Hey, look at the figure. Larger the number of what is a circle after all? It is an it is a a circle is nothing but a polygon with infinite sides. So as the number of sides increases, it becomes closer and closer to circle. And here you can see the difference in area of the circle and the octagon is negligible. So if there were choices which were closer, I would do the area of square to area of the circle. What would I say? Okay, yeah, radius of the circle is one. Or two or whatever number, put area of the circle. If the radius of the circle is one, area will be pi. Okay. If this is one, this is one, diagonal is two, side will be root two. Okay. If the side is root two, what will be the area of the square? Two is to pi. Two is to three point one four would be the approximate answer. I can easily say it is about sixty percent. So, answer choice one. Remember, I am taking with respect to circle, with respect to octagon, it will change a little, but among the choices, I don't need to waste my time. So, your task is to eliminate choices by looking at the option and making an approximate figure or doing some kind of approximate. So, another question of geometry. Um, let's look at this one. ABCD is a square, arcs AC and BD are drawn on square ABCD with centers at D and C respectively. So, ABCD square, these are the centers of these two. Arcs. Okay. Uh, find the area of the shaded region to the area of the square ABCD. Okay. Now the first thing, is it too much to say that the area of the shaded region is less than the area of the square or in other words my answer should be less than 1. Okay. Now go to the choices. Please check the choices. Whenever you have choices which are such stupid looking numbers, you will end up in a situation where there will be some stupid choices, some illogical choices. Let's look at each of these choices. What is pi? Pi is 3.14. I will take pi to be approximately equal to 3. And what is root 3? 1.732. I will take it to be 1.7. You know, just to get an idea. So what is pi by 3? Pi by 3 will be approximately 1. And root 3 by 4? Root 3 by 2 will be 0 0.85. And root 3 by 4 will be approximately 0.43. Okay. Let me just erase this. Okay. So 1.7, 0 0.85, 0 0.43. Approximately. So what is this? 1 minus 0 0.43. So can I not say this is approximately 0 0.6? Right? What is choice number 2? Pi is approximately 3. So 2 minus root 3 by 4. How much is 2 minus root 3 by 4? Root 3 by 4 is 0 0.43. So can I not say this is approximately 1.6? How can the area of the shaded region be more than the area of the square? This means it is it is 160%. Wrong choice. Choice third. 9 by 2 is 4.5. So this is 4.5. 4.5 minus root 3 by 2. Let's take it 0.1 only. Uh, okay. Let's take that as 4.5 minus 1. This is approximately 3.5. 3.5 means area is 350%. Not possible at all. And choice 4. Pi by 3 is 1.85. Let's say this is about 0 0.2. 
Okay. Now please look at this figure. What if I draw the diagonals from AC to A and C and BD? This will, will this not be 25% of 0.25 of the total? So my answer should be greater than 0.25 hence this is wrong. This is the correct answer. If you look at the figure carefully, visual inspection will give you an answer all the time. Not all the time, most of the time. Now you could have also done something slightly different. Is this not an equilateral triangle? If the side of the square is 1, that means it is an equilateral triangle of side 1. What is the area of equilateral triangle? Root c by 4 into side square. What is root c by 4? 0 0.4c. Okay. So my answer should be greater than 0.4c because I have not looked at this. Again, you will get the same answer. So my point is that if you are willing to look at the figures, you will start getting the answer directly. Okay. Now, let's look at this particular question. Ugly looking question, but yes, can be handled x equal to under root 4 plus under root 4 minus and so on and so forth in finite series. Okay. Now I will break this question into two parts. First thing, look at, just ignore this. If I ignore this, can I say this is under root 4 or x shows it is coming out to be under root 4, but I have more terms to add. That means I can say based on this x has to be greater than under root 4 which is equal to 2. Okay. Okay. x has to be greater than under root 4 which is 2. So x has to be greater than 2 because after this term some more terms will get added. So very very clear an answer needs to be greater than under root 4. And now take another case. After the second term there is a minus and then things are getting removed. So ignore this. Now what do we have here? Can I not say after this something is getting subtracted. So this is the maximum value of this expression. So I can say x should be less than under root 4 plus under root 4. How much is this? Under root 6. How much is under root 6? Very simple. 2.5 square or 25 square 625 so 6.25 and 2.4 square what is 24 square? 5.576 so this becomes 5.76. So can I say this is approximately 2.45. So I would straight away say my answer has to be between 2 and 2.45 approximately. Now let's look at the choices. Obviously long choice. This is definitely going to be more than 3 square. So long answer. So we are left with two choices. How much is under 13? Again look at number 10 negative 5. They are very useful for calculating the squares. What is 35 square? 1225. That means 3.5 square should be. Oh, I am making a mistake. Okay. 3.5 square will be 12.25. So can I say under root 13 approximately should be about uh, 3.6, 3.7, take any number does not matter. What is this going to be? 3.7 minus 1, 2.7 my, divide by 2, this is going to be about 1.35. My answer has to be greater than 2, less than 2.45, this does not lie within the range long answer. Similarly, what about this? 2.7 plus 1, 3, uh, yeah, 3.7 plus 1, 4.7 by 2. 2.35. It lies within the range. Correct answer. So you don't have to form equation. Look at the upper and the lower limit and you will end up with the correct answer. Graphs are something which people are most of the time very very uncomfortable with. So let's try to understand how to do graphs. The rule is simple. Substitute. Find the, uh, point, find the points and eliminate choices. Let's look at the first question. This, this particular question. Y equal to twice of mod x plus size of gint x. Simple. Put the value of x. So if x is equal to 0, what is the value of y? 0 plus 0. 0, 0 should be a point available on the graph. 0, 0 is missing here, hence choice 3 is wrong. Choice 3 is wrong, so I will not worry about it. 0, 0 is available in the other 3 choices, so we will retain them. Next, take x equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, what is y equal to? 2 plus 3, 5. x equal to 1, y should be 5. At x equal to 1, 5 is available. x equal to 1, 5 is available. x equal to 1, choice 4 is wrong because at x equal to 1, we don't have a value of y. Or it's in the negative side. So choice 3 and 4 are out. Now look at these two graphs. Both of them are identical on the positive side of x-axis. So take a negative value. x equal to minus 1, what will that be? That will mean 2 minus 3. Minus 1. If x is minus 1, y should be minus 1. x is minus 1, y is minus 1. x is minus 1, y is going down somewhere. 
x is minus 1 is somewhere down. Okay. So, that means this particular choice is going to be wrong, correct answer, choice 1. Okay. So, remember graphs means substitution of values, nothing else. Interesting question of time speed distance, it tells you that if you are not willing to put in lot of effort in terms of calculation, you will get the answer faster. Okay, Let us look at this one. Spinter starts running on a circular path of radius r meters. Her average speed in meters per minute is pi r during the first 30 seconds, pi r by 2 during the next 1 minute, pi r by 4 in the next 2 minutes, pi r by 8 in the next 4 minutes and so on and so forth. What is the time taken for the nth round to that of the previous round? We want to find the time taken for n sound divided by time taken for n minus 1 sound. I am not going to do the general case. I will say find out the time taken for the second round divided by the time taken for the first round. That is what I need to do. So I don't need to do the entire tamasha. I am only looking at second round time divided by the first round time. To make my calculations, what will I do? R equal to 1. Okay. So if R is equal to 1, what is the circumference equal to? Circumference is 2 pi R, so 2 pi. So, the distance is going to be 2 pi or circumference or the track length is 2 pi. Okay. So, if if she had time taken for the second round, okay, what is the time taken for the nth round to the time taken for the previous round? Okay. So, first round, how much time will they take? Let us say. Okay. So, that means the distance to be covered is 2 pi. Let us look at this numbers. Average speed is pi r during the first minute. So, what does it do? Not, not 30 seconds. So, so let me say uh, speed okay, and time. Speed is pi in the first 30 seconds. Okay, and then it is pi r by 2 during the next 1 minute. It is pi by 2 in the next 60 seconds. It is then we have pi by 4 during the next 2 minutes. So, 120 seconds. Then it is pi by 8 in the next 240 seconds. You can see the pattern already. Okay. What is the distance covered? What is the distance covered? It cover it does pi meters per minute in 1 minute. It is pi meters per minute. So it is going to do pi meters in 1 minute in 30 seconds, it will do pi by 2. Pi by 2 meters will be covered. Okay. So next, pi by 2 in 60 seconds, obviously, in the, the distance covered will be equal to pi by 2. It does pi by 4 meters per minute. So, in 2 minutes, 120 seconds is 2 minutes. So, pi by 4 into 2. So, again pi by 2. Now you do not need to do anything more. In each of this, each of these blocks, it will do pi by 2 minutes. So, for the first sound, how much time it has taken? So, T2 time taken for the first to the second round divided by time taken for the first sound. First sound, Time taken will be 30 plus 60 plus 120 plus 240. 30 plus 60 plus 120 plus 240. Right? What will it be for the next round? Same pattern 30, 60, 120, 240. Next will be 480. 480, double of 480, 960. Double of 960, 1920. Double of 1920, 38.40. Now, please do not waste your time adding. I should have not done this much also, but I am doing it to explain the. Now, look at this 13 to 16, 16 to 16, 120 into 16. This is going to be the ratio of 16 by 1. So what should the answer be? This. You do not have to do the calculation. Look at the pattern. This pattern is what you need to identify and get the answer. So, look at time taken not for the general term, look for a specific case and you will get the answer faster. Okay. So, what this is what I want you to do. When you are learning, when you are preparing, please don't focus on only mathematical formulas. Try to work on the Jugar skills also. Start looking at choices. Start looking at the complete information. What does Jugar mean? Optimal utilization of all available resources and information. So information is available in question and choices. Please look at all of them and then decide what you are supposed to do. Second thing. One of the most important resource for you will be the CL mock cats and in each mock cat, whether it's a prime cat, time mock cat or a, or a countdown cat, I'll be sharing with you Jagor solutions from various, uh, for various questions. In addition to this, I'll also be doing it for the old cat papers on a regular basis and which is why 
I will keep meeting you on a regular basis to give you more insights and more ways of doing these questions. I will also be doing the other section which is DILR and verbal and we will also discuss strategy as to how to maximize your score and how to how to, how to to go, go through the whole process. Okay? Uh, obviously for this I would want you to like the videos, subscribe to the channel so that you stay in tune, in touch with whatever we are doing. So that's it from my side today. All the best. We will meet again.